Addiction runs in my family. It's in my blood. If you go back in my family tree, you will find a seemingly endless list of Irish, blue-collar alcoholics who smoked and drank their lives away. And I'm not shaming them or talking down on them. Addiction and alcoholism is a very serious illness. It's probably one of the most common, yet least talked about. After all, everybody drinks, right? It's all good, baby. Party hard, get drunk all night, woohoo! Until you're in your mid-30s and you realize you can't stop drinking every weekend. Both of my parents are addicts slash ex-addicts. Also, they've been divorced my whole life, by the way. My mother has been a victim of over-medication or being over-prescribed for various illnesses, causing her to get addicted to her meds, and it took her a long time to function without them. My father lost his license for 10 years after his third DUI. So all of my early memories with my dad were riding bikes, taking trains, and walking places because he couldn't drive. But once my father lost his license, he hit rock bottom. He decided he was going to break the cycle. He was tired of generations of our family being drunken construction workers who never amounted to anything. And in August of 2021, he'll be 25 years sober. Even I'm impressed. And my mother is doing much better these days as well. She doesn't take any prescription meds anymore. And she's only doing like holistic medications, essential oils, that type of thing. It seems like 99% of the problems that happen to me and my family can be traced back to addiction and side effects of it. It's vicious. And I'm sure a lot of you watching this, like an uncomfortable percentage of you have a parent, a sibling, or a family member struggling from addiction and is hurting you or hurting your family. I also consider myself an addict, which is funny because I've never been drunk a day in my life. And what's also funny is even after sitting through everything I just told you, you're probably like, damn, not even once? No, not even once. Every single time I tell someone I don't drink, they say, like never? Not even on holidays? Not even on your birthday? What about when you turn 21? What about in high school? No, bitch, I just told you I don't drink. Never. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, because you don't get those same questions when you tell people you don't smoke or don't do pills. But no, I've never been drunk in my life, and honestly, I have no desire to. I mean, sometimes those fruity drinks that my girlfriend gets when we go out to dinner look a little tempting, but uh, I'll just stick to water. And the next question people always ask me is why? Why don't you drink? Which is another insane thing to me because why do I have to explain why I don't drink to you? Like imagine somebody offers me a shot and I say, no, I don't drink and they say, why? And I'm like, because for generation after generation, my family has been drunk assholes who abused their families, were in and out of jail and couldn't function properly without having a sip of that liquid you're offering me. <laughs> that would be a total buzzkill. That was an exaggeration obviously, but it seriously bothers me how every time I tell someone I don't drink, they ask me why. My response every time is just, I don't know, I just don't. And still to this day, that is my response. You would think that again, after everything I just told you, my family history is the reason I don't. But I don't think it is. When I was 14, 15, 16, and my friends were all trying alcohol for the first time, I wasn't like, man, my dad told me not to drink, so I shouldn't. Come on, we don't actually listen to our parents. I tried a few different drinks during that time, some cheap vodka, champagne, beers, some whiskey, I think, and I hated the way it all tasted. So the decision was simple for me. <laughs> I don't like the way it tastes, and I don't really have the desire to get drunk. Luckily, I had good friends. They never pressured me into it and respected my decision not to, and they still encouraged me to come to parties and hang out with them. So I did, and I liked being the sober one. And they did too. And as I got older and all the parties I went to, I realized that drinking is mostly not fun. Most people get too drunk, say things they don't mean, make a bunch of mistakes, and wake up the next morning feeling like ass. I think we've been brainwashed to thinking that this is how we're supposed to have fun. And I'm not trying to act like I'm better than anyone. If you can manage your drinking, go ahead. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. I'm just speaking for the people that don't drink or are maybe unsure about it or they're feeling peer pressured. What I'm addicted to is my work, my career, these videos. It's all I think about. If I didn't have a girlfriend and also when I didn't have a girlfriend, 24 seven, I'm thinking about content, ideas, filming, views, etc which is definitely not something that's entirely healthy. I mean, generally more positive, but you have to take a break from that too because I'm a little obsessive over my work. I mean, it probably is better than drinking <laughs> or pills or drugs, but if it hinders your real life, then maybe not necessarily. I also did get addicted to jeweling for like two years. That's another silent killer, so stop jeweling. <laughs> but we good now. My serious addiction to my YouTube career has been the reason why I've seen success. It's a blessing. I think because I'm a sober person, my mind has to be addicted to something. Most people drink to escape, whether they realize it or not. And as long as I can continue to do what I love, I won't need to escape because reality is pretty lit and I'm happy with what I got going on.
If you made it this far in the video and you didn't watch the previous two or three, it would make a lot of sense to watch those first, then come back to this. You'll probably start to get it a little bit. But basically the whole point of this mini series was for y'all to get to know me a little bit more because I felt really like disconnected from my audience. Obviously not as many of you care to get to know me, but I appreciate all the people that did watch these videos. I'm calling it the We Need to Talk series. Sounds cool. Everything is okay. I know a lot of people just read the title and thumbnail and then they DM me and they're like, bro, are you okay? Like, just watch the video. <laughs> I was talking about stuff that happened to me in the past. I'm okay, I'm mentally sound. Um, in fact, that's the reason why I was doing these videos in the first place because I feel like I'm finally in the position in my life to, to really be able to talk about the things that I went through, you know, and be able to help y'all. But as you can imagine, I got bills to pay. I got a, a channel to grow. So this is gonna be the last one. Um, maybe at some point in the future, I'll do another series where I can talk a little bit more about my life, but I wanna get back into making videos about music and just kinda get back to the regular style. I know a lot of y'all missed that. I pretty much took like the whole summer off from doing it. So I'm really excited to get back into it. I got a series coming out called Locked In that I'm really excited about. I also stream every single day 4 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, so you should definitely pull up. Tap in with me on all of my various channels. I have so many YouTube channels now. Um, I'm all over the internet. Waterpack, I love you. You now, you know me a little bit more now. We're friends, okay? I'll see you soon.